Welcome back to my strategy guide on Terraforming Mars episode 4. Today we're going to talk about synergies and then we're also going to talk about a literal recipe of how to winning the game of Terraforming Mars. So here it is, this is like a list of priorities if you will. So this is what I think you should be looking for at all stages of the game. So we're going to talk about the opening hand, the early to mid game and the mid to late game. And to be honest it's kind of impossible to make this list here without talking about some of the stuff we talked about in the first three episodes because synergies in Terraforming Mars is just such a huge entity. So some of this stuff, actually most of this stuff we probably already talked about. About, but there are also a lot of new stuff in this video. For instance, floater synergy is a subject I have a lot to say about and this is probably the only video where I'm going to talk about floater synergy at all. So if nothing else, just go to 12, look what I have to say about floater synergy and then proceed to the next episode if you want. I don't know. That being said, I still think this episode is actually pretty important because I think it's very enlightening to realize exactly what stuff you should be keeping your eye out for in the different parts of the game, mainly the opening hand, the early to mid game and the mid to late game. So when you get your opening hand, you get 10 cards, 2 corporations, a couple preludes, this is what I think you should be searching for. So first of all we got money income and card draw. When I get my opening hand this is the first thing I look for. Which of these combination of cards will give me the biggest engine possible? Throughout this episode if this is stuff we already talked about in the previous episode I'm not gonna spend too much time repeating myself today instead I'm just gonna write on the bottom of the screen here for example check out episode one tip number one this is where we talked a lot about money income but basically it's anything that helps you to build your engine so we got mega credit production, got steel production, titanium production and when you have a little bit of this going on when you've climbed out of the hole then you can look at stuff like brand production, heat production and also we kind of have to take into account the number of players so in two player games it's really important to get as much mega credit production as you can. In five player games mega credit production is still important but in addition to that you can also build your engine just by getting a bunch of tier on stuff like this and then we get card draw cards and like we talked about card draw and money income is like the two different sides of the same coin you kind of need both in order to have a good game. And once again we kind of talked a lot about card draw in the last episode but there's still some important stuff here I didn't mention so let's look at it. When it comes to the opening hand I think I would always keep these three cards here. These three cards are just too good to pass up. And since we are talking about the opening hand I think I would keep most of the card draw I see. I have a few scenarios and a few cards I might not keep but as a rule like when you're starting out the game card draw is really good because if you play it in the first generation this is gonna draw you a lot of cards during the game. So in the opening hand card draw is really good. You might not play it in the first generation. It's actually a little bit more important to just build your engine, build your mega credit production first but then right after you've done that you play your card draw and you're gonna get a lot of cards from this. So I'll definitely keep most of the card draw cards I see in my opening hand. When it comes to card draw it's actually easier to explain when not to go for card draw. So for example if we're not talking about the early game but if we instead are talking about the late game instead then some card draw cards might just be too expensive especially considering they might only draw you like one to two cards so is it really worth to give like a lot of mega credits just to draw one card? Sometimes it is but mostly it's not. For example if we look at a card like inventor skill if you're looking at the last generation or the second to last generation then you're paying nine mega credits plus three for the card plus three for the action that actually allows you to draw a card so this is 15 mega credits just to get one card if you play this in the last generation so that's really not good it could be that you're really desperate and you're like ah, i need to top deck something amazing a joven amplifier something to win this game but as a rule you really don't want to play 15 mega credits just for one card so inventor skill if you play it early in the game in the early to mid game then it can actually be quite good because then you can get a lot of cards for this. To be honest I think this is one of the weaker card draw cards in the set. It's a bit expensive for what it gives you I think. But it can still be worth it to play the card because there is actually one giant redeeming factor of this card. I wonder if you guys can spot it. It's really important so you need to pay attention now. Here it is. All the inventors in the picture is Jakob Fuxelius who is one of the guys who made the game. And then the text says when great minds meet new ideas are bound. It's brilliant. I'm kind of fanboying. Let's move on. And the second instance where you would not keep card draw is if you already have a lot of good cards in your hand already. For example if your hand is like stacked with like good quality a lot of high impact cards why would you need more cards just play the cards you already have it's fine. If your economy is strong you can still pick up even more cards to be even more greedy. If you don't have resources to pay for all the new cards you're getting then maybe it's not worth it but I mean if you already have the card draw cards you kind of want to use it right. And this kind of leads me to the third one it's all about how strong is your economy can you actually afford to pick up even more card draw cards because these cards doesn't really do anything for your engine they're just here to give you cards and some of them are pretty expensive so ironically if your engine is bad then sometimes it's actually hard to keep these card draw cards because it's kind of like a luxury you cannot afford right now what i mean is sometimes i pick up a card like a minton skill and then i plan to play this but then i'm like oh i also have to play my engine and then i have to play these engine cards first because otherwise uh, you're not really snowballing and then this card is just stuck in your hand and you're never using it so to be honest it sometimes happens that i buy a card like adventure skills for three mega credits and then i have it in my hand the entire game and then in the last 
generation, I end up selling it for one mega credits. And obviously this is terrible. So what it really comes down to is my economy strong enough to actually play all of these card draw cards. Or number four, if you're all in on cities or the terraforming strategy, then sometimes, well, I, I kind of don't even need this card draw card because I just rather want to spend all my resources doing this one thing that I'm really good at this game. So this hand here, for example, this hand is so good that I'm not, all right, I'm going to be all in on cities, nothing else matters. I even made a mistake keeping iron mining industries in this opening hand, I think. But definitely I don't keep development center because all my resources, I just want cities, I want plant production. I don't even need cards at this point. This hand is so good already. So if you're really all in on either cities or terraforming strategy, then it's sometimes better for you to just go all in on that direction and then you don't need so many cards. And finally, card draw is even better in two or three player games because these games tend to be longer in terms of generations. So if you're playing a two or three player game or if you have a feeling that this game is going to go long in terms of generation, then card draw is really good because it's all about the card strategy in these long games, to be honest. And the second thing I look for in my opening hand is synergy. And I know it's a little bit redundant because this whole thing is about synergies, but mainly I'm looking for colony synergy, discount synergy and heat synergy. So let's talk about colony synergy first. I think this is really important because I really think almost all of the colony cards and also the colony standard project build a colony for 17. So these are really good. So if I just get a little bit of support, for example, standard technology, then I might be more inclined to keep fewer cards in my opening hand because then I'm more like, all right, I'm just going to build a bunch of colonies. It also depends which colonies are out there, but obviously all the colonies that gives you some sort of engine to begin with, that's what you're looking for in the early game and also Pluto. So in the first generation, I'm definitely considering Ceres, Luna or Pluto and also a little bit Tritan. But Tritan is kind of like a weird one because it doesn't actually give you an income of titanium. But the nice thing about Tritan is like the colony is really cheap because it costs 17 and then you get nine back because the placement bonus is three titanium. So maybe you can use these three titanium for something nice in the same generation. And also if you are playing with colonies, getting three energy production is really important. So you can do this on Callisto or Europa. So here are the colony cards. And like I mentioned, I really think all of these cards are really good. Maybe except for the two big ones here on the left, but I think all of the other ones are solid. It's not like a slam dunk. You don't automatically just keep all of these cards the moment you see them. But every time I see these cards on the right here, I'm, I'm at the very least, I'm going to really consider, all right, should I keep these cards? Should I play these cards and play a lot of colonies? That is something I would seriously consider when I see some of these cards here. And like we've maybe mentioned before, even if you don't have any synergies for colonies, you have nothing, then I might still consider playing one of the colonies, especially Luna, over playing a suboptimal card in my opening hand. So your starting hand, it has to be good cards. It has to be cards you want to play. Otherwise, why not just build a colony instead? So if your choice is, for example, building a colony in Luna or playing this card, Import of Advanced GHG, without having any synergies for it or anything, then obviously Luna wins. I'm, I'm sorry, I, I used this slide before. I'm, I'm kind of biased. I like this slide. Then we got Discount Synergy. And a lot of these cards, if I see them in my opening hand, I'm really happy. Like if I see Earth Office, even if I don't have one single Earth tag in my entire hand, except for Earth Office, I would probably still keep this card because then during the game, I'm gonna pick up some Earth tags. And worth noting in that case, I'm not actually gonna play Earth Office in the first generation. I'm only gonna play Earth Office just before I play another Earth tag. This is like the case with all of them. And Earth Catapult, I think the only way I'm not keeping this in my opening hand is if I'm all in on cities or all in on terraforming. And even then I might still consider it at the very least but it could be the case that I just want to go all in the cities and in that case I'm not going to play with catapult and obviously if I do have optimal error breaking I would be more inclined to keep some of the space events in my opening hand so what I'm trying to say is you have to look for synergies in your opening hand you have to look at all right what are the effects that's going to benefit some of the other cards which of these cards play nicely together there are actually more discount effects than these cards here they're also the effects from the corporations so here is an example of an opening hand I had in the game and the opening hand is pretty terrible but I had this corporation this Chinese corporation. I don't have the confidence to actually <laughs> say this corporation out loud. But it's just an example of a corporation that gives me two discount on all building tags. So this opening hand here was not really that good, but at least I had three building tags, so I would be more inclined to go for those, right? And worth noting, this opening hand didn't really have any money income. There's only like a little bit in fuel factory or something. So I just went with whatever I could get. Then we got heat synergy. And like I've mentioned before, I'm not that crazy about heat. So why is this a priority in the opening hand? The thing is, I think the heat cards by themselves are kind of weak but if you had some sort of heat synergy some sort of heat combo then it could be kind of good so like i mentioned if i have optimal error breaking in my opening hand i might also be more inclined to keep some of the cheap space event cards that also gives me heat or if you have meltworks or helium corporation or something like this then definitely you keep your eye out for all the heat production you can get it's kind of good in that case because if you get to this point where you can get one tr every generation then it's actually like eight mega credit production because one tr is kind of eight mega credits kind of like the same deal if you got extreme called Funkus together with Regolith Eaters or something, then it's also one TR 
CR every generation. In that case, you could also make the argument that it's kind of like 8 mega credit production for a combo like this, but it's a little bit worse because as soon as the oxygen is maxed, then this combo is completely useless. And if you, for example, are this, let's be honest, annoying person who just keeps pumping up the oxygen, then it would stand to reason that the oxygen is maybe the first parameters are closed, and in that case, this combo could be completely useless in the second half of the game. The third thing I'm looking for in my opening hand are my cards supporting some sort of strategy. The strategies here are the ones we talked about in the previous episode, but as we are talking about the opening hand here, it doesn't make much sense to talk about strategy 1, 5, and 6, as these strategies are something you think about in the mid to late game. But I mean, it could be the case that you have like two Jovian amplifiers in your opening hand, then obviously you're probably going to consider going for Jovians this game. But even then, I would argue then what you're focusing on is strategy number 3, the card strategy, because really the Jovian and the green tech strategy, those are extensions of the card strategy, I think. So in my opening hand, I'm really just thinking about strategy 2, 3, and 4, like the Filthy Dirty Terror former, the card strategy, or the city strategies. Does some of my cards in my hand really support one of these strategies? And then once again, we have to take into account number of players. Is this going to be a short game or a long game? Because for example, the Filthy Dirty Terror Farm strategy, that only works if the game is going to be short. It doesn't work if it's a long game. And you might be thinking, well, you're the Terraformer. You can just make sure that the game ends fast. But that's just impossible in two player games. You cannot end the game by yourself in two or three player games. It depends on the other players. So if I am looking for cards in my opening hand that supports the terraforming strategy, then it's probably because this is a four player game or a five player game. But in every game a player probably look for cards that support the card strategy or the city strategy. And speaking of number of players, this also matters a lot I think when talking about the two corporations in my starting hand. I think some people think I'm a little bit extreme when it comes to this stuff, but I really think it matters if you're in a two player game or a five player game. Some corporations are just better for two player games and some corporations are better in five player games. So in a two player game I'd say that Sars is like B tier and Point Luna is absolutely S tier with a goat. Point Luna is amazing in two player games. And in five player games, Tharsis is all of a sudden S tier with a goat and Luna is like B tier. And another example that really hits this home for me is like Umni. This corporation is so terrible in two player games, but that's because Umni is all about the terraforming strategy and the terraforming strategy is kind of bad in two player games, right? Umni in two player games is maybe not as bad as I make it out to be because to be honest, like if you have like one free tier every generation, then that's kind of nice but even then it's still just it's bad cooperation compared to a lot of the others so often what happens is you're kind of like griefing your own game just so you can satisfy this condition that you have to get a TR every round and then you could get another TR for 3 mega credits. Uh, it's, I don't think it's good. So all things considered, Umni in a 2 player game, I'm pretty sure that's garbage. However, Umni in a 5 player game, then it's all of a sudden an 8 tier cooperation I think. Because in 5 player games it's all about the terraforming strategy to be honest. It's so much terraforming going on and the game could be over in like 6 generations or 7 generations. In that case, it's great. You can even use Umni in a five player games to like ensure that the game doesn't go super long. So even if people have a nice engine going on, you can still punish the people with the engine by closing the game super fast. And this is something you can do in five player games because when there are five players around the table, the games are just gonna be shorter. So really what I'm saying is the terraforming strategy has a higher chance of winning in five player games, which also means that Umni as a corporation has a higher chance of being successful in five player games. But even in a five player game, I'm still not gonna award Umni a GOAT. I mean, it I, I just can't bring myself to do it. I'm not even gonna give it an S tier. I think it's an A tier. It's fine. If I ever awarded the goat to Omni, then the goats themselves would riot. They would revolt. They would rise up against me, start a revolution and overthrow me, throw me in prison, and then in the next morning they would execute me by burning me on the stage. Needless to say, Omni will never be awarded the goat. Omni is really only good in five player games. Maybe four player games, but that's pretty much it. And then we got Veto. I put it over here because I thought, alright, what cooperation really comes to mind when I think about the cast strategy? There are, there are a couple of them but one of them is definitely Vito. And then it was like, this is for sure good in two player games and maybe it's not so good in five player games, but it's not really like that. I thought about it some more. I don't think Vito is ever a bad cooperation, not even in five player games. Maybe eight tier for two player games is even a bit low. I, I, I'm definitely sure that some people will feel like this is an S tier cooperation in two player games. I didn't think much of this cooperation at first, but what I've realized is when you're going for this card strategy and you are going to go God mode, like getting three mega credits every time you pick a card with a VP on it, that's like a big component of how to go god mode. So it's definitely a win more cooperation if you're going for veto. If you're going for the card strategy and you're having success with it, this cooperation is insane. On the other hand, the early game with this cooperation is really not good. Like you don't really want to play cards with a VP on it even in the early game. So it's really a slow beginning. It doesn't come with any credit production or anything. So it's a little bit like Pond Luna in a sense that if you're getting lucky, then you're going to demolish everyone. And if you're getting unlucky, if you don't really have any early game, if you never get the card strategy up and running, you never go god mode, then what 
is this cover region really doing for you? Not much. Taking that into account, I think A tier is reasonable, even though I'm pretty sure that some people is gonna give this an S tier. I heard that on this uh, Terraform Mars website something, people are actually really enjoying this cover region. But getting back to the starting hand, are there anything in my starting hand that really supports the terraforming strategy? And once again, this is really better if it's a 4 or 5 player game. And like we talked about in the previous video, Regalit Eaters, GHG producing bacteria, these are not really good cards by themselves. They kind of do need like another card that can really give them some microbes for these to be efficient. So I'm not a big fan of Regalit Eaters and GHG producing bacteria. But then again, I'm not really a big fan of the terraforming strategy in general. So maybe that's what it is. So you could decide to just start terraforming based on your opening hand. It's like, if you don't have any engine, this is what you have, go for it. So in four or five player games, this is a fine strategy. In two, three player games, this almost never works. Only play this if you are absolutely desperate in two or three player games. So I say that, but here on the starting hand, I showed you before, I kind of went for the terraforming strategy, even though it's a three player game, but I kind of did this out of necessity than anything else. I just didn't have anything better in my hand. So in my starting hand, are there any cards that support the card strategy? So for example, if I have a lot of money income, if I have a lot of card draw, then I'm definitely considering going for the card strategy. So let me show you a couple of examples of really good starting hands, especially when it comes to the card strategy. I talked a lot about this starting hand in the previous video, but basically the starting hand is amazing. Why? Because I can play AI Central in the first generation and I have a lot of mega credit production as well. So if you have both engine and card draw, then you're golden. And AI Central in the first generation, that's amazing. So here is literally the best starting hand you can have. This is like me theory crafting and that's a little bit of user made content here. So I promise I'll be brief. I have a later episode devoted to user made content, but this is like, we're talking about starting hands. We're talking about synergies. Just have to show you this. So I'm just going to be really brief here. Talk about this is really good. And in a second, I'm also going to substitute the user made cards with normal cards in case you don't want to play with user made content or in case you don't have user made content. But why is this starting hand so good? This is like everything I talk about in the card strategy. We got a million cards and we're getting a fair bit amount of mega credit production and mega credits from other effects and stuff like this. A while back, I played a deck that was pretty close to this one and it was insane. I literally drew all the cards and I have like 700 cards. I drew all of them. Then all of the cards in the discard pile, I also drew all of those. So I drew maybe like 700 cards in that game. And that was like a year ago. And since then we got some new stuff. We got new partner, merger, some of the new preludes. So I kind of optimized this starting hand afterwards. So I haven't actually tried this deck, but it, it's completely insane, I promise you. Anyway, this user made stuff we're gonna talk about in episode 13. But right now I'm just talking about the synergy here. And the synergy is like you imagine, I have a ton of cards, a ton of mega credit production. So here's the player order I would play this deck in. And the only downside of this deck is it draws too many cards. I'm, I'm not kidding. You're drawing the entire deck and then the game is not over yet and then you have no more cards to draw. So if you have less than 500 cards in your deck, I would actually recommend you take out under second copy left because this cooperation, this card, it just draws you too many cards and also worth noting copy lift also makes your opponent draw some cards, which is not what you want when you kind of want to draw everything. So in this case, I would substitute those two with Valley Trust and Space Relay and then the preload I get from Valley Trust should be Vital Colony. And then the Vital Colony, you actually put a Leave It Station so you get four science tags and two Jovian tags. It's really cool, but I should probably move on now. To be honest, there's a lot of people that don't really like user made content. It makes sense because it's not really something that developers made. It's not really balanced in the same way and stuff like like this. So real quick, just for those of you who don't want to play with or don't have user made content, you can actually just remove those and substitute them for something else. And like you can see, there's actually not that much user made content here. So instead of these files, you could substitute it with something like this. And interestingly, you could actually go supply drop with advanced allies because this gives you a lot of stuff to begin with. So you can actually play this entire hand a lot quicker. Byron is kind of cool. You can use it with AI central, high tech lab or orbital cleanup, but I went with Vitor because when I'm losing depth right, I felt like I was a bit short on mega credits in this deck and Vitor just gives you a ton. So here's the starting deck with only official cards, so no more user made content. And the synergies here is just all over the place. So you're gonna draw a million cards, you're gonna get a million mega credits, you're gonna play a million cards, and you'll get like a million points. This is like if God mode was a starting hand, this is what it would look like. I'm, I'm gonna move on now. I'm a nerd, I'm sorry. And just to throw in a little fun challenge here, I challenge everyone to theory craft a better starting hand than this one. Maybe you have more user made content that I'm not aware of, or maybe you're just smarter than me, which is entirely plausible. If you do theory craft something, nice rather than the comments and I'll talk about it in the episode called feedback. So in the starting hand maybe you have some cards that support the city strategy. So it could be these cards here and like we mentioned Immigrant City, Martian Real, Stasis. Those are kind of the big three if you want to like build your engine building cities. Especially if you want to go for the terrible city standard project for 25. If you're going to build this terrible standard project in the early game it's good later but in the early game is terrible so if you're going to do that you definitely need a lot of city support. So you need like two out of three Immigrant City, Martian Real, Stasis. It could also be the case that you just see a couple 
of these cards in your opening hand, maybe one or two or three, and then you're like, all right, maybe I'm just gonna build cities in the second half of the game, and then you're gonna build your engine with something else, with cards most likely, and then in the mid game, you're gonna get a lot of plant production, and then in the mid to late game, you're just gonna place a lot of cities with these city synergetic cards you have, and then you're gonna plant a lot of greeneries around your cities. Also reasonable. Other city synergetic cards could be immigrant shuttles, standard technology, if you are going for the standard project at least, could also be greenhouses, although greenhouses is better to pick up in the mid to late game because this is really a late game card. This card is so good in the last generation or something. Let's say there are like eight cities on the map which is entirely reasonable since you're going for cities so that's probably gonna be even more than greenhouses like at least one greenery. So the last generation is pretty common to spend 23 mega credits to get a greenery down so if you can get this for six plus three for the card so nine that's a really good deal. If I am going for cities I might even pick this card up in the early game just so I can play it in the last generation. That's how good this card is. And like we mentioned if you are going for cities it's kind of nice to see what a dream city starting opening hand is and this is it. This is like kelp farming plus ecology experts combo. Really nice. Then we got a bunch of cities, a bunch of plant production. There's like everything you want when you're going for cities. Except this hand is maybe missing immigrant city and Martian rails but you know you can't get it all. But the city synergy in this hand is so good that I actually even regret going for IO mining industries which is crazy. And then number four in my list of priorities of what stuff to go for in my starting hand we got milestones. At least planning which milestones to aim for this game. So it's worth noting that milestones are pretty low in my priorities in the opening hand. I'm sure a lot of people don't agree with this. I think a lot of people look at a game of Terraform Mars, see their opening hand, like, all right, which milestones can I go for? Nothing else matters. I only care about the milestones. I don't think this is a good approach. I think the stuff we talked about so far is even more important than milestones, and then milestones is kind of nice if you can get a milestone that's on your road anyway, or if you have to take a little detour to get a milestone, it's also fine. But just don't go all in on milestones. Like, if you see the mayor milestone, and you see, oh, I got focus space save in early settlement, and then I can buy a city, this is such a bad play. You're just instantly going to lose the game just so you could get the Maya milestone. It's not that important to be honest. So in the early game and also in your opening hand you should definitely have milestones in the back of your head. Like maybe some cards are supporting a milestone somehow and you can get like an idea of what you might want to go for this game. And in any game you should always aim to get at least one milestone but on the other hand in your opening hand it's not really that important because what if the other guy is is then you're like oh shit I kept cities just so I can get the Maya but this guy is is Now I'm probably going to lose that anyway. Because in your opening hand you have no idea what you're opponents are actually going to go for this game. You haven't even seen their corporations at this point. So even if you're keeping like a lot of cards because I want to get this or that milestone, then you're not even sure you're going to get it because you don't know what your opponents are doing yet. And once again, we have to take into account the number of players because in two or three player games, the milestones are less important, but in four or five player games, the milestones are really important. Then in five player games, I might be more inclined to pick suboptimal cards in my opening hand just because it's supporting a milestone. And after I've worked through all of this, the first four prior priorities on this list so then I get to number five. Can I afford keeping some of the good cards in my hand for later? The cards that I'm not gonna play yet but later on they're gonna be really good. Can I actually afford to keep these? And the reason this is like the last one on the list is because I want to look at the first four points here first and after I've made a plan of what I want to do in the first generation then I can actually calculate how much mega credits is gonna be left over. So can I afford to spend like three mega credits on absolutely nothing right now just so I can keep a card for later? The two things you should know. It's very expensive to keep a card that you're not gonna play right now because three mega credits in the first generation is a lot better than three mega credits in the last generation. And secondly, it's often worth it because some cards are just so good in the mid to late game that it's worth keeping them in the early game, even in your opening hand sometimes. So examples of cards I might want to keep in my opening hand, well first of all definitely resource amplifiers because we're still talking about the opening hand. So in the early to mid game this is when you want to play all of these resource amplifiers if you can. Though it's pretty likely that I'm gonna keep some of these cards here. Maybe not stuff like Zebulins because of the five oxygen requirements, maybe not quantum communications if I don't have any science text and you could go on. But generally speaking I would be very happy to see these cards and often I would keep these in my opening hand. And especially the plant amplifiers if I have some synergy going on these could be really good as well. To be honest it could also just be plant production in general. You don't really want to play this in the first generation because like we talked about you really want to get money income but you could still keep these cards and play them in the mid game that's entirely reasonable. Jovian amplifiers we definitely want to consider keeping those those. I'm not gonna keep them every game but at least we're gonna consider keeping them. The same thing with the green VP amplifiers. I think some of these cards are really underrated and they can give a lot of points but obviously this is only if you're going for the green tech strategy. Some of the juicy science cards like these ones could also be reasonable to keeping your opening hand even if you don't quite fulfill the requirement yet. So it's kind of like an estimation you have to make how many science techs do I have in my hand and how long is it gonna take before I can get these down and what if I never get the last science tag I need it's gonna ruin my game. You can also get 
and just like hope you get the science tag you need. It's a little bit risky because if you don't get the science tag, you're kind of stuck with a dead card that you played 3 4 in your opening hand, and that's not good. And once again, number of players also matters here because generally these cards are better in two or three player games because they tend to be longer in terms of generation, especially when we're talking about AI Central and Anti Gravity Technology. Amazing cards in two player games, but really risky cards in five player games. So if you want to pick my brain about what stuff I think about in the opening hand, this is like the list of my priorities. This is like the list I have in the back of my head, maybe subconsciously, and I think a lot of you guys have this list or something similar in your head or subconsciously as well. Since we are talking about the opening hand, I would be remiss if I didn't mention some of the stuff we talked about in the first episode. Indentured workers and lunar exports are really good cards in your opening hand. Lunar export gives you 5 mega credit production. And indentured workers is also a great card in the opening hand, even though it gives you a negative VP. Because the way I look at it, 5 mega credits in the first generation, like with accumulated interest for the entire game, then it's gonna be like 5 victory points. So it's gonna be way better than the 1 victory point you stand to lose by playing this card. This card is actually so good that I pick it up in the mid game as well. I might even pick it up in the late game. So yeah, I really like this card. I think a lot of people disagree, but I think this card is really good. And of course, Hero Break the Money, Asteroid, and Interstellar Colony Ship. Terrible cards in your starting hand. Don't do it. Also, keep in mind some of the trap cards, the cards that kind of look good because it gives you a production. But when you think about it, if you calculate how many generations before this card actually pays for itself, then it's gonna be not great. It could be the case that you just have terrible cards in your starting hand. So, in that case, this can be like a good plan B, a good plan C. And to be honest, design microorganisms, this card can actually be okay sometimes. So, now we've moved on to the early to mid games. So, what is exactly the list of priorities of stuff I want to focus on in this part of the game. So number six, we got resource amplifiers. So once again, the resource amplifiers can be really powerful and they can straight up decide the game for you. However, these cards are still very situational. They don't always work. So you still have to look at, is this a good card for this particular game? But generally speaking, I think a lot of these cards are really good, but it depends on the game, of course. And it should go without saying that if you have insects, cartels, satellites, or something like this, then you should play to maximize the value of these cards by playing as many of these tags as possible before playing the amplifier within reason and when i say within reason you probably don't play terraforming ganymede just so you can get one more mega credit production from satellite in the early game that's not a good idea and also keep in mind this aspect we talked about the production is generally better the earlier you get it down so it's kind of a balancing act because the thing is a lot of these gold amplifiers they're like increasing in value as the game goes on also i should quickly mention robotic workforce it can be really good together with Geropolis or medical lab and we talked about the strategies i'm looking for in my opening hand and stuff like this but if i have robotic workforce and geropolis plus maybe i don't know two or three venus or earth tags this is probably going to be my strategy i don't care about anything else this is probably just what i'm doing this game and number seven finally deciding on a strategy the thing is even in your opening hand you have an idea what you're going for but a lot of things can change during the game you can pick up some synergies that just pull you in another direction or you can see what your opponents are doing so it's going to be a long game or a short game so a lot of things can change in the early game but now that we've reached the early to mid game you probably have a pretty good idea of what your opponents is gonna do what your cards gonna look like and you probably have a pretty good idea what your strategy should be so i think this is a part of the game where i really decide which strategy i'm gonna go for and as an extension of number seven we go to number eight should i aim for a short game or a long game this is also the part of the game where i think about this stuff so like we talked about in episode one if you got the greedy cards the greedy engine you want the long game and if your opponents got the cards and the greedy engine you want a short game you then want to close the game to actually punish the greedy guy and number nine we got the milestones and now i'm talking about actually buying the milestones before we were like planning on which milestones to go for but now we reached the early to mid game this is the time where we're actually trying to buy some of them so once again here are the milestones from the base game which is tharsis and also helis and elysium so i know i tend to talk down milestones a little bit i don't think it should dictate how you play your game but that being said it is of course quite nice to get five victory points for eight mega credits so in the early to mid game this is definitely something you should think about and technically since the first award also only cost eight mega credit you can also consider this but to be clear it's only the first award for eight mega credits and even then you have to be really sure that you're actually gonna win it because starting an award especially in the early to mid game and then one of your opponents is gonna beat you in that award that's really bad that's like game losingly bad and number 10 which is the final priority in the early to mid game if your economy can handle it you should really start picking up vp amplifiers but i'm saying pick up you shouldn't really play them yet you should play them at the right time which is 
usually either the mid game or the late game. For example, if we're talking about the Jovian amplifiers, like in nine out of 10 games, you play these in the very last generation, but that doesn't mean you can't pick up the cards now. The green tech amplifiers, if you're going for green tech synergy in general, these cards can also be really good to pick up and then you play them around the mid game, I would say, except of course for imported nitrogen, large convoy and advanced ecosystems. Once again, these cards are probably best to play in the last generation or at least in the late game. Then we arrive at the mid to late game. So first of all, plant production and I kind of feel bad for putting it here in the mid to late game because truth be told plant production in the late game is often not worth it the mid game is really when you want to play plant production cards or at the very least after you've built a money engine then you can even play plant production in the early game in the mid game is also probably when you get to play some of these plant amplifiers they can be really strong and although I did say the plant production in the late game is often not worth it because it's just too expensive for what it gives you for the last couple of generations naturally if we're talking about these babies it's different because these cards are so good especially considering that these cards come with vp attached to them and the reason why plane production is so good in the big game and greeneries generally are so good in the late game is because they give you a lot of vp it gives you one vp for the greenery one vp for the oxygen and one vp next to your cd it could even give more of this next to two of your cities so with plane production out of the way and plane production is really a mid game thing to be honest then you can see the theme about the mid to late game is getting the synergies that gives you a lot of points so play order synergy green tech synergy awards and the jovian amplifiers and other cards that just straight up gives you vp this is like the stuff you want to look at in the second half of the game this is where you can score a lot of points so let's talk about floaters floaters is only if you're playing with the venus expansion but at this point i'm kind of assuming that you are if you're not then skip this chapter of course floater synergy it can generate a lot of vp i think some people are underestimating how many points you can actually get from floaters it's quite insane and because i feel like most of the floater cards are here to actually give you a lot of vp this is why we're focusing on this in the mid to late game except for a few cards there are actually a few floater cards that are better suited for the early game so let's look at them so here are the floater cards that are pretty good in the early game and to be honest at this point you probably know why this is the stuff that gives you some sort of card draw or make a credit production or engine and then you might be thinking what about titan floating launch pad and what about atmo collectors why are these good in the early game but these are cards from the colonies expansion so if you're playing with these cards you are playing with colonies and like we've established by now it's really good to be able to trade so if you're having one of these two cards in the opening hand then you probably don't even need to get three energy production and that could be really good it can save you a lot of gold and then of course there are a few of the other cards here that could be situationally good in the early game as well like Jupiter floating station if you have like three science cards and a bunch of jovians but probably you don't have that in the early game so this is probably better in the mid game to be honest and then saturn surfing is also good in the early game if you have a lot of earth text this is one that's probably more realistic it's more realistic you have a bunch of earth text than you have science or jovians because earth text are more related to mega credit production and stuff like this so it would make sense that you have some earth tax in the early game especially if you got lucky and you got like acquired companies or some of these earth tech gold production cards something like this but with that out of the way i think a lot of these cards are more suited to generating you a lot of vp or tr or something you can use in the mid to late game i think a pretty clear and a pretty powerful way to get vps off of floaters would be to pick up like jovian lanterns or floating haps so these two cards are really good and the reason they're good of course is that if you put floaters on on this card you get like half a point per floaters and you can put a lot of floaters during the game. Startopolis is a little bit worse in this regard because it only gives you one third of a point per floater. However Startopolis has a lot of other uses as well. It's really powerful in some combos. We're gonna get to that in a second. And also notably Startopolis can put two floaters on a card so if you put it on itself that, that alone is like two third of a point every generation. And here's a funny little stat that I noticed after I made this slide. Look there are nine Jovian tags on the floaters. That's exactly the same amount as there are venus tags so this once again underlines the point that i'm trying to make that with all these jovian tags and stuff like this th these are really cards that are better suited for the mid to late game a lot of them i think so here's the most interesting stat about these cards and the whole reason i think jovian lanterns and floating have are such good cards look at this 16 of these cards has the ability to put floaters on a different card and you might be thinking but there are only 15 arrows here but that's because that's also airliners i just i, I gotta be honest I, I couldn't fit it on my slide so here it is but if we're being perfectly honest who the hell cares about airliner but the point here is really there's so many cards that can actually just boost your jovian lanterns or your floating hand so it can give you a lot of points if you have some of these combinations here then we also got a couple of corporations that can give you floaters and we also have titan a colony that can give you floaters so i thought a lot about this and i boiled it down to the five most important things you can do with floaters first of all we talked about this you look for jovian lanterns or floating heads and then you just spam floaters on these cards like an absolute maniac this can generate you like a lot of points it's really powerful and secondly you 
can look for Floater Combo. There is actually quite a lot of these. Here are some examples. For example, we talked about Stratopolis. This is a really good card in conjunction with something like Force Precipitation, for instance. So it's a bit similar to the Micro Combo I showed you earlier in this video. The idea is you can get one free tier every generation. And like we talked about, as long as there are Venus to be had, this is kind of like 8 mega credit production that's worth. And the reason I write that this is like sort of worth 10 mega credit production is because Stratopolis, the card itself, also comes with 2 mega credit production. Then we got Stratopolis plus Floating Haps. Once again, this can generate like a lot of points. This is exactly 1.5 VP per generation because Stratopolis is going to give you like one point and then the card itself is also capable of giving you like half a point every generation. Then you might be thinking, well, it's actually cost 2 mega credit, but 2 mega credit every generation, that's actually the same as the 2 mega credit production you get from Stratopolis. So it works out. And here is one of the sickest late game combos you can get with Floaters. So here we got Hydrogen to Venus and Floating Haps. So this you typically also want to play in the last generation or maybe just before the Venus closes or something like this. Hydrogen to Venus is actually so cheap that you can also use it in a different way. You can use it earlier to just get one Venus so you can play something like Venusian Animals or something. But generally speaking I really want to save this card for the last generation because together with something like Floating Haps it can generate a lot of points. If you think about it this card is like half a Jovian Amplifier when you use it on something like Floating Haps because all of the floaters are like worth half a point per floater. So this is really good especially considering how cheap it is because this also has a space and an event tag. Chances are that when we're talking about the last generation you do have a discount especially on space tags. There's a lot of discount on space tags. And of course the downside of this card is what if you don't get floating haps or Jovian lanterns or Stratopolis. Then the card is of course not good. So these are some of the really good combos. Some of the combos that can really win you the game but you don't really have to get all the really good combos. There's a lot of like small combos that are just fine that are just good enough. An example could be this one. Floater technology plus aerial mappers. So when you think about it this is just one free card every generation. It's fine. It's actually exactly the same as subcross measurements and the funny thing is the cost is also almost the same so it's not fantastic but it's not bad either. It's okay and maybe you get some discount or maybe you can use the science tag for something. Who knows? Could also be something simple like floater technology with titan shuttles. So basically you're pumping floaters on this card so every floater is like worth one titanium so if you think about it then floating technology is basically one titanium production. Once again it's not amazing but it's something. It's, it's not bad. Now number three you aim to get the hover lot and the vena file. This is like one of the biggest thing you can do with venus tags and floaters in general. The thing is if you play it like they originally intended then every game is gonna have hover lot and vena file. So hover lot is the milestone which you can claim by getting seven floaters and the vena file is the award for most venus tags. It makes sense that you have a lot of venus tags if you're going for floaters. You might not necessarily but it would make a lot of sense if you have. And number four you can also play some of the really powerful cards with venus requirement. And I say there's a few good cards which is true but the biggest one by far is venusian animals. And as you can no doubt see from these pictures here, I really like Venusian animals. This is like such a good card. It can give you so much points. So just having an animal card with animals being worth one victory point per animal, that by itself is worth something. And then like I mentioned in the previous episode, what you can do is you can have this card in your hand for a very long time until the Venus is finally up there. Or you can even keep it in your hand even longer. And then in the last generation, or at least in the late game or something, you can just slam down Venus animal and slam down all the science tags you've been holding in your hand just so you can get that extra one vp per science tag one vp per science tag makes a lot of science tags insanely good and finally the last thing i want to make clear about floaters is that most of these cards are just good enough by themselves i mean you don't even have to have a good combo for these cards to be worth it i don't think that all of these cards as a whole is stronger than the colony cards i think the colonies are stronger but that being said a lot of these cards are just solid by themselves so i just wanted to mention this just in case you're like all right we're talking about floater synergy it's only good if you get like a combo or some synergy and oh, a lot of these cards are actually quite good by themselves they're not bad not bad at all so these are the top five things to keep in mind when you're going for floaters i could be forgetting something here but if i am i'm sure you'll write it in the comments thank you and number 13 also in the mid to late game we are looking at green tech synergy so once again we talked a lot about this in the previous video in episode 3 part 2 but here are some of the important things to keep in mind when we are talking about green text first of all if you're going for green text then meat industries topsoil contract and also if you're playing with turmoil you could get gmo contract these cards are stupidly powerful this is like going god mode with green tech it's really good then green text can of course generate a lot of points with microbes so for example if you have ants or venusian insects then you could get some nice combo with extreme cold funkers or this new card back to viral research and also decomposers can give you a lot of points as well and when it comes to animals you really want a 
at least one card where the animals are worth one victory point per animal. And the reason is there is also a ton of cards in this game that can give animals to another card, like for example, Large Convoy or something. And here is like the best example I can give you of how green tags can actually generate so many points. So we got Advanced Ecosystem, it's worth three victory points. You play this in the last generation. However, if you also have Vile Enhancers, Decomposers and Ecological Zone, then all of a sudden this is like five victory points instead of three and also you get three plants. This is by the way also just another reason why you play Advanced Ecosystems in the last generation. Maybe you pick up Vile Enhancers or Decomposers or Ecological Zones or something that makes this card better in the late game. Because these green VP amplifiers, how you can generate a lot of points with the green tech synergy. Like if I'm going for green tech, I'm having a good game, I'm going for the card strategy, I play a lot of green techs, it feels like this is even stronger than Jovian's. It feels like this is actually generating more points than Jovian techs. Here is an example of a game where I got a lot of points from green techs and keeping in mind this is on the Mars app, so this is only vanilla and prelude. I don't even have a lot of the cards here. And in the mid to late game, at this point, we should definitely also think about the awards. So here are the awards from the original map and worth noting here that when I say that you should look at this stuff in the mid to late game specifically I'm talking about the second and the third award that cost 14 mega credits and 20 mega credits to be honest the first funder that cost 8 mega credits that one is probably already gone in the mid game but the one that cost 14 and the one that cost 20 honestly these are not that important it's okay if you just wait until the mid to late game before you go for these so the first award should be claimed maybe in the early to mid game but to be honest only if you're really sure that you're actually gonna win this award otherwise don't do it the second award that cost 14 maybe in the mid game is reasonable and the last one that cost 20 this is definitely a mid to late game thing don't start this too early it's really not worth it and if someone else gets it fine they just spend 20 mega credits to get five victory points it's not that big of a deal and maybe they won't even win that award and even if they do win it then maybe you get a second place so they just spend 20 mega credits to get three victory points over you it's not that important and finally, the last thing you do in a game of Terraforming Mars is you want to score as many VP as humanly possible. And then I changed the text a little bit here because it used to say another VP cards, but then I realized it's not even limited to cards, you just have to look at all your available plays really. Basically, which plays gives you the most VP in the late game, and then you just go for that play. So examples of this could be Jovian Amplifiers. These are great cards to play in the last generation, except for a mining industry, you usually want to play that a bit sooner. But the other three, Ganymede Colony, Water Import from Europa, Terraforming Ganymede, those are usually usually cards you want to play in the very last generation. Could also be just normal cards that does nothing for you except give you VP. These cards you also want to save in your hand so you can play them in the very last generation. But that's pretty much it for this literal recipe for success or whatever you want to call it. Basically all the synergies you want to look at at the different times of the game. There's a few other minor synergies we haven't talked about like water synergy but to be honest that's only if you've got arctic algae or lakefront resorts. And then I guess also the hidden water synergy is if you are building a lot, if you're like going all in on cities or on greeneries or boats then water synergy is a little bit better because you can set yourself up to get some nice placement bonuses. Then I guess I haven't really talked about science tax synergy enough but I think I'll save that for episode 7 called what everything is worth because I kind of felt that this episode here should be dedicated to this recipe and to be honest science tax can be played in any phase of the game really. You could say the science tax are closely related to card draw so it's really good in the early to mid game or something like this but to be honest I mean there's so many different science tags and they do a bunch of different things so you can't really say that science are better in the early game or in the mid game or in the late game it really just depends on which science tags we're talking about i will quickly mention that there are a bunch of science synergies that you should really keep your eye out for so for example we had this example before but like research got two science tags so that's basically two cards and one victory point unless you have all of this stuff then it's a lot better so if you got olympus conference mars university venusian animals then all of a sudden just the card research is worth three cards a rotation of two cards and three victory points i think i made this wrong so the only types of synergy that i can think of that i didn't really mention much in this episode is like the tags themselves what is the science tag worth what is the earth tag worth and so on but just a quick couple of words venus text is like science text in my opinion it can be played in any phase of the game depending on which venus text we're talking about venus text are also closely related to the venus scale and floaters and hoverlord and venophile and some of the stuff we already talked about here now we've got jovian text i've talked a lot about this in the last episode called strategies and then the jovian strategy but generally speaking jovian text should be played in the mid to late game except for the cards that gives you money in card. But even then it's not always the case. Sometimes even though you have iron mining industries in your hand you kind of want to play it in the mid game because the cards are so expensive so maybe you have better plays available to you in the early game. And also a card like Callista Panel Mines, yes it gives you three mega credit production but it's so expensive so exactly a bad way to build your engine using this card. Hopefully you have some better way to build your engine and then these kind of expensive Jovian tags, even stuff like Panel Mines are best played in the mid game. 
Earth attacks, generally speaking, should be played in the early to mid game because earth attacks are really closely related to make a credit production, usually. So keep in mind, I'm not saying that all earth attacks should be played in the early game and if you play them in the late game it's bad, I'm just really oversimplifying here. Like for example, Media Archives is a card that's really good in the mid to late game and this has an earth attack. And once again, we'll talk about all the attacks and what they're worth and stuff like this in episode 7. And that's pretty much it for this episode, so thanks for watching. As always, if you have any suggestions, anything I missed, any discussion you want to start with me, I'm game. Just write it in the comments and i realize a lot of the stuff in this episode i talked about in previous episodes but i'm kind of making this lists of exactly what i want to think about in the different phases of the game so i kind of have to include it anyway i hope you still had fun and maybe learned something uh maybe not I don't know.